Okay, today we're going to do a little tutorial on concentration, which involves calculating molarity, and uh, this will uh, take you through the basics of concentration and do a couple problem-solving uh, questions. So in chemistry, uh, we use a lot of solutions, and it's important that we have a, an ability to quantify uh, how much of a solute we have in a solvent. And that's where concentration comes into play. So what I've done is I've uh, set up a little uh, demonstration, a model of uh, two solutions. They both have the same, uh, they're both based from the same salt. So we have potassium iodide in each solution. And uh, of course, being a salt, they're dissolved in water. So we use the AQ to denote that it's an aqueous solution. Now we can see by the model I've got here that we have two different solutions uh, and the way that they differ is the number of particles of potassium and iodide uh, in each solution. We have solution one here which appears to be highly concentrated. There's a high density of ions in it and solution two right here which appears to be a lot less dense. Uh, then solution one, we have less particles in the same volume. As we can see, we have the same unit volume. So what we do is we can give ourselves a simple little definition for molarity and concentration. So when we talk about concentration in the wonderful world of chemistry, we're looking at the number of particles per unit volume. And there's many ways we can look at it. But when it comes to concentration in chemistry, number of particles, uh, especially if you're dealing with even something the size of a liter, even weakly concentrated solutions, the number of particles would be astronomical. Uh, so what we do is we go back to our friend the mole. And when it comes to unit volume, it's always uh, useful to use a liter. So we have, uh, for concentration in chemistry, we have a unit called molarity. And we denote molarity with a large M. And our molarity is the number of moles uh, of whatever. Uh, we're looking at per unit volume, and this unit volume needs to be in liters. That's going to be important later on. And so our units are moles per liter. So let's take a look at a couple questions here, um, problems that we can use to solve. So let's say we had an acid spill and we had to clean it up with a stock solution of base, which is always important that you have stock solutions of acid and base with known concentrations, just in case you have uh, any acid spills. Uh, a lot of times you would use uh, vinegar or baking soda, but in this case we have a stock solution of caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide. So before we jump into this, let's uh, make sure we put down the formulas that we will need uh, to use and we'll take some time quickly just to uh, manipulate the formula so that we have the three different variations. So molarity of course is uh, your number of moles over your volume. Now we can manipulate this um, to get uh, if I want to solve for moles then I would cross multiply my volume up so it would be my molarity times my volume. And I can also take this formula and say, well, let's solve for volume. So therefore, if I want to look at volume, it is my, uh, my number of moles divided by my concentration or my molarity. So it's always good to have our, our uh, formulas up and ready to go. Now, let's say that we know our concentration of hydrochloric acid, and it turned out that it had a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per liter.
and uh, we also have a uh, we know the we also know the amount of acid that we spilt and that was 500 milliliters All right. Now we know our concentration of of sodium hydroxide, our stock solution, and that is 0 0.02 moles per liter. But we need to figure out what volume of this will need to completely neutralize the acid. We don't want to have any extra base and we don't want to have any extra acid left over so now we need to go and figure out do our calculations here now right off the hop we check and make sure our equation is balanced and we can see that it is right there um, next up notice that I gave the volume of the liquid in milliliters and we get that a lot first thing we need to do is convert and we know that there's a thousand milliliters in a liter so this is half of a thousand or 0 0.5 liters. All right, now what we can do is we can take our formulas. If we know our, our concentration and our volume, we can solve for number of moles. Remember, everything in chemistry always comes down to the moles. It's so important. So when we take a look at the number of moles, our number of moles is going to be uh, 0 0.1 which is our molarity times our volume 0 0.5 and so we get 0 0.05 moles now we can use our molar ratio so if we take a look at our molar ratio we can do that quickly here we can see that if we go from hydrochloric acid to sodium hydroxide, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So that lets us know our number of moles. Now we can go back to our old formula that we had from before. that if I know my uh, uh, moles and I know my concentration, I can solve for volume. So I know now that V is equal to N over M, and I can take my number of moles, 0 0.05 moles, and divide that by my concentration, 0 0.02 moles per liter and I get an answer of 2.5 liters. So it would take two and a half liters to fully neutralize uh, this solution. Um, and so we would be pretty confident that if we had any acid or base left over after dropping pouring two and a half liters on the spill, it would be uh, pretty weakly uh, concentrated.